You never know, we could get Mind Blast here. We actually had the opportunity to get a double Mind Blast on an earlier run, but decided not to because I think we needed to not die, more importantly, than having two copies of Mind Blast. I see we've got Silent going into the Slime Boss here. That's always a bit of a challenge, and our starting bonuses uh, leave with something to be desired, let's say. Straight up card remove is simple, but could be effective. I actually wouldn't mind a defend remove that much. If we want to gear up for some early elites, we could take three random potions. But I don't know. My usual approach is to try to get as many reasonably defeatable elites as possible. What that means is elites that are after a fire or a shop or a chest, ideally. These all make it a lot better. A path like this is pretty reasonable. We get four rest sites, which is excellent. Three elites, which is pretty dang good. And a shop to stock up on potions initially could be pretty good. That would let me take a card remove just fine. If we felt like we needed more immediate help, I'd take the three potions. That would likely discourage me from going to the shop, and we could take two events instead. But I don't know if that's better than just getting a free card remove and then buying two potions for the price of a card remove. Wasn't the plan to start with another clad run? I, th I think two runs on clad was enough. Let's do some silent. How do I feel about removes versus slime boss in act one? They are not as good. When you're staring down a draw pile full of slimes, you really want every strike and defend you can get, especially the strikes, which are the key component here. Uh, and between the threat of slime boss later and the threat of gremlin knob now, I'm very strongly considering defend remove as our first card. I actually don't mind defend remove that much. It allows us to take a block common or uncommon, whatever we find, and feel pretty decent about it. We can pick up a dodge and roll over skipping, we can pick up a backflip and feel pretty good. We can pick up a leg sweep and feel pretty good. We still have five strikes, but we can fix that later. Ish. I think that is what I'm going to do, is remove one of our defend cards. Can you get survivor from matching keep or just neutralize? Just neutralize. We'll have to use a duplication effect to get mastery of survivor. Just like we did for mastery of vigilance. Light Lord, did you hear about the Ironclad who decided to pursue a career in baseball? Unfortunately, he was only capable of striking out. Have I got a mod for Mastery Display? Yes! You're checking out our um, Slee the Spire Mastery Challenge mod created by B. Yi, a community member here, generously for the stream. Really like the minimalist approach here. We've got a red outline on relics that are not mastered and a simple not mastered text display on cards that are not mastered. And cards that we have mastered are displayed normally. I think it's it's perfect. It's uh, an in-game visual to display, but it's not a confusing one, and that's what I really appreciate. So, we do get offered a footwork, of course, after removing a defend. Still takeable card very much, um, but I do think Sucker Punch is a pretty reasonable pick as well, giving us some better damage and a bit more weakness, which will help in Gremlin Knob, Lagavulin, and the Slime Boss fight. What classifies as mastered? To master a card, we must win a run of Slay the Spire, defeating the Heart on Ascension 20, that is, with two or more copies of that card in our deck. Two or more instances of the card. I'm going to take Sucker Punch over Footwork Floor 1 after removing a defend. We've got things to punch. I punch you. Break that block. Neutralize. Actually, we can extend the weaken by one turn. We should strike the front one with Neutralize. And that lets us kill this one with two strikes, block this one with one defend, kill this one next turn, or two turns from now, depending on the draw. Launch. All right, very clean fight. We get a mildly useful potion. 
And here's one of the block cards we're allowed to take if we want one to replace the... Defend that we removed. I've really come a long way on backflip. I, I think it's a really fantastic card, broadly speaking, to add additional draw to the silence deck. So I really like adding a backflip at this point. That's right, Xenomorph's Wrath. The cards have to be permanent copies that are in your deck screen here. In the top right. This will show all the cards you have permanent copies of. And that, uh, regardless of your combat state, that's going to always be true. So, for example, Ascender's Bane will always be here, even if it's exhausted during combat. Look at that backflip. So we do want to go to this shop, right? Shop could remove a card. I'm actually okay with the strike remove, maybe, now that we have backflip and a sucker punch. But it's also buying, potentially, a potion to defeat the elite with. One swift potion is not going to cut it. Joworm. Backflip defense sucker punch works well. We could also, if we don't want to draw better cards, we could just play defend, defend, sucker punch. Keep these in the draw pile. I do think I want to draw two, though. That feels right. Could also play Survivor over Defend there. B basically equivalent play. Would have preferred that Jawworm attack us this turn, but oh well. We can full block this, so all is fine. Hmm, I think I actually do want to not draw cards this time. I want to be able to play all these damage cards. Uh, although we could play a damage card alongside Survivor if we drew it, because they have block. I don't want that. Let's just... Allow the hit to bounce off our shield so that we can strike with full power here. Can't quite KO. Next turn, though. Wizardry, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the cozy sub club. This might, reminds me of the Wizardry series of games. Some old school computer RPGs. Pretty fun. All right, very smooth jawworm fight ultimately, and I uh, attribute that to our removed starter defend and the added uh, commons that we have. Just made that a lot better. Another great common here, acrobatics. Could have had such a block engine already with uh, backflip, dodge and roll, footwork if we wanted, but then we wouldn't have any damage. Is there any way to know who your Act 3 boss is going to be, says Old Soul. Not until you get to Act 3, unfortunately. It is totally random. If you have to feed on Donu as your last achievement, that one is pretty tricky. Because there's unfortunately no way to guarantee that you both encounter a feed during the run and then later encounter Donu Deka. Your odds of encountering Donu and Deka increase substantially if you play on Ascension 20. However, you may find that the game is a lot more difficult at Ascension 20, so I don't think that will actually improve your odds of getting the achievement compared to playing on, say, Ascension 1 and doing twice as many runs. But yeah, that one, that one may just take some time. We've had that one occur randomly on stream quite a few times. If you play a lot of Ironclad, it will eventually happen. The circumstances will arise, as long as you're taking feeds, of course. Oh, man, if I could afford Thousand Cuts, I would actually buy it here to deal with uh, Slime Boss. That said, there are some sweet things available in this shop. Leg Sweep is notably on sale, a very premium uncommon card. Two weaken and 11 block. Uh, I see Predator as a pretty reasonable attack card, too. And if we want a way to multiply our attack card damage, there's also Trip for zero cost, which is very good alongside the backflip. Fortunately, I can't do Leg Sweep and Trip. Otherwise, I might. But I can do Leg Sweep and Predator, and that's pretty good. Morning, Failey. Hello, hello.
Very useful to see. Even the pros don't always win. Glad you glad you enjoyed that loss on YouTube. Uh, they don't always get. There's a lot more losses that I could post on YouTube than that I actually do. Uh, for a variety of reasons, but uh, it's definitely part of my favorite thing of uh, live streaming my content is that it creates that that tension. You don't know you don't know what's going to happen, and the pros at this game do not always win. Not even close to all the time, although. More than half the time, which is something I'm continually very proud of. Ah. That's right, and to clarify, uh, playing on Ascension 20, you're more likely to encounter a Dodu and Dekka because you have to fight two bosses at the end of Act 3. One and then another one, which improves your chances twofold. Uh, instead of one in three chance to encounter Donu Deck, it's now two out of three, since you fight two of the three possible bosses. So let's take let's take Predator Leg Sweep. I think that's what I've decided. We could also do Card Remove Leg Sweep. Remove another defend? But I like, rather like the additional card draw of Predator. Predator is also a fantastic upgrade for the uh, pre-elite fight here. So let's take a Predator. I think Predator is one of the best damage cards the Silent has access to, actually. Backflip Leg Sweep, and I can break block with Agony? What am I looking to backflip into here? Next turn looks like it could be difficult. The only louse we know is going to attack us next turn is the back louse here. So I think we should leg sweep the middle louse. Strike the front and the back one. And then full block. But don't draw cards, don't draw cards. I don't know if that's right or not. Here we are. They all choose to attack me because they are rude. Good news is I can kill the back one with Strike Sucker Punch. Then we can neutralize the front one and block. We'll only take six, but we are going to take six. I don't love it, but uh, we got pretty aggro lice, so there's not much we can do. I'll take it. Kill you. Damage you. Okay, not too bad. Get another potion that we can use in the elite fight coming up. Which we don't have to do, but I think we're prepared. Especially with an upgraded predator, we should be okay here. And we can add another card. Choke, acrobatics, or distraction. This is not a time... I would have to... If we didn't have Predator here, I'd have to take this choke out of desperation. As it stands, we can either take the acro or we can skip. And I'm pretty okay with skipping here. Although acrobatics could be nice in the slime boss fight, definitely. I think I'll skip. We don't have the energy for it yet. Although it does enable draw discard stuff. Might be fighting Grumblinob. I really can't afford an acrobatics right now. Okay, upgrade the Predator. Be on our way. We're upgrading Predator because it's the highest single flat numeric value upgrade we have. That's usually how I look at upgrades, is look at the absolute numeric value increase you're getting. So plus five damage is how I evaluate Predator. Meanwhile, Endless Agony is two damage two times. Sucker Punch is one turn of weak and two damage. Lake Sweep is three block in one turn a week. This is a pretty good upgrade. But we're looking for damage, and this is what Predator is providing more than anything else. Predator Plus do indeed go so hard in Act 1. Very excellent if you can duplicate it with a potion, too, with a Liquid Memories or a Duplication Potion or something. All right, how will we fare here? It's not a Gremlin Knob, which is already a good thing. I think this will be a good fight for our Dexterity Potion. This is also a really good fight for Predator that say Plus on it. And yeah, let's just start right now. That way we'll draw this whole draw pile and we can start with uh, Leg Sweep Sucker Punch or something. 
really shouldn't have to take too much damage against this enemy. Lagavulin's very much a damage race, as we're going to get debuffed losing strength and dexterity. Every three turns in this combat. That's quite dangerous to us. So we have to keep the pressure up with damage. Specifically, we must play Predator every time we draw it. Uh, keeping the Weaken up is also a pretty good idea. Good Predator draws so far. I don't mind skipping this Leg Sweep. And realistically, we just have to play Predator two more times, plus a little bit of extra damage to win. That shouldn't be too hard. Thanks to the Dexterity Potion, making sure our blocks are still relevant for this part of the fight. But now Strikes are only doing four. One more debuff, the Strikes will do two, and after that, the Strikes do zero. If you don't have any attack cards that do double-digit damage values, this fight can get out of control very, very quickly. Play one Strike here. So here, for example, we cannot afford to play League Sweep because we have to play Predator for 18 damage. That hurts. Hurts quite a bit. But then we're through before we get debuffed again. Ouch. Get 34 bucks in a boat thingy, one of my favorite relics to get early. 14 blocks starting on turn two. And an early masterful stab is actually not unacceptable here at all. We've got very good block engine thus far, particularly with a boat thingy, so I really like it. Would be my single favorite relic? It's Runic Pyramid, easily. Runic Pyramid changes the way the game plays since you're allowed to keep cards in your hand. And mostly for me, this lets you set up stupid combos of cards that would normally be unreliable together and allows you to make the maximum impact of cards that are normally very situational, like something like Concentrate. It's almost a takeable Concentrate. I'll grab a Masterful Stab. I actually quite like it for Slime Boss. It's zero cost, deal 12 damage sometimes, which is quite spectacular. We get another upgrade here, and I do want to take the upgrade. Again, worried about Gremlin Knob. I actually would consider upgrading this Masterful Stab to hit harder, although it's a card that becomes a lot less useful later in the game, which makes me not want to upgrade it. Asimsaw says, what does the non-mastered text mean? That's part of our... Uh, uh, Self-imposed challenge for the stream this year on Slay the Spire, which is the, the mastery challenge. A, a card must be mastered by beating the game with two or more instances of that card in the deck. So essentially I'm forcing myself to win the game with all of the different cards in the game uh, across the course of the year. It's been a pretty fun challenge so far. Of the form cards, what's my most to least favorite? Let's see. Which is different to, to be note from most to least powerful. Most to least powerful would probably be Wraith form, Echo form, Demon form, Deva form. Most to least favorite is going to be Echo forms at the top. I think Demon form is second. Deva form is third and Wraith form is last. Yeah, I like doing damage. And I definitely like doubling my cards. So one of our best damage upgrades is Masterful Stab, which makes me kind of sad. I really don't want to upgrade Masterful Stab. I could upgrade Endless Agony for plus four damage one time. Or we could upgrade Sucker Punch for two more damage and even more weak. But if, if I, I would rather upgrade the Leg Sweep than the Sucker Punch. But we need more damage, so... I am going to upgrade this. Dang it. Upgrade Masterful Stab to get through Slime Boss. Upgrade Masterful Stab to get through a Gremlin Knob. And take a pair to gain 10 max health. Other option, of course, being to take the Sapphire Key. We need one of three keys that we're going to need to get to Act 4. The other one being a key we get from skipping a rest site. I usually do this in Act 3. Or a key, and rather, the green key, which is acquired from a Burning Elite. 
an elite with superpowered nonsense. I usually don't get the Burning Elite that early unless it's a uh, part of a convenient path because I value getting a more total elites, more total relics in the act more highly. Pretty promising start to Gremlin Ob. We do 40 damage on turn one. We're going to draw a lot of cards and we have full block with the boot thingy coming up. Masterful Stab should deal an easy additional 16 here. Boop. We weaken the Gremlin Ob. This would be the time to consider using the Swift Potion. Very strongly, actually. Yes, this is the time for the Swift Potion. Swift Potion here lets me either play both strikes, and then we have a higher chance of redrawing into damage cards next turn, or better yet, if we get the backflip, which is a 3 out of 4 chance, we can then play the backflip to reshuffle all of these cards into the draw pile while having every defend in the deck in our hand. That way we can play only attack cards next turn. So our actual best line here is to Swift Potion into Backflip to reshuffle the deck. That's what we want. And we do get the Backflip. I could play Strike first, but I just want to draw two. If we hit the Predator, we're going to be sad, but it shouldn't matter because we're still going to draw all damage next turn. We don't hit the Predator. So now this is our, our draw pile for the last turn of the Gremlin Ob fight. And that's why we wanted to use the Swift Potion right then and there. Masterful Stab does it. We get through the Gremlin Ob with zero damage taken. That's pretty cool. Ooh, After Image Blade Dance Concentrate. That's a pretty takeable After Image. After Image gives us one block every time we play any card, which highly incentivizes taking uh, zero cost cards. Yelzio says, thanks for the nine months. Starting a new job as a teacher tomorrow. Do I have any advice as you're feeling nervous? It's natural to be a little bit nervous. I was definitely nervous. Uh, my first time, but the important, I, I think a really important part is to note is that is you're, you're going to be in a, in a sort of position of, um, authority or command esque, just the way that the, a classroom is, is set up and presented to the students that are within it mean that people will essentially take everything you say at full face value. If you make a mistake, no one in the class might notice. So that may or may not take some of the pressure off, I guess. But I guess what I'm trying to say is um, the only real critic is going to be you. Just be, just try to be natural and neutral and explanatory. Um, and if you, if you don't, you're not going to deliver every piece of information you're tr you're trying to convey perfectly but that may not matter the children are more afraid of you than you are of them yeah that's also right <laughs> maybe that's not good advice i am taking this after image though genuinely so for that one kid in the back yes that guy look at this damage output her blam 22 health splint turn one a good slime boss practice fight. Boat thingy get in there. Hmm, we're going to be weakened next turn and we know our exact draw. I would really like to be able to kill the front slime next turn. These are only going to do three damage a pop. So we need to bring this slime below six or down to six, which means not playing this after image so that we can guarantee to kill it next turn. Because otherwise we can't full block double eights. This could even be double twelves, I think. Always look at your draw file. Very important information may be concealed within. Ooh, and a kill, too. Perfect little mini slime fight. This uh, silent deck full of attack cards, and in particular these upgraded uncommon attacks, is really doing quite well for now. But note that it's going to fall apart eventually. Masterful Stab is an uncommon card that we... actually have pretty good setup to utilize. And we do want to win with two copies of eventually. This is 
pretty good time to get started, quite frankly. It even goes well with the after image. Let's do it. Double Masterful Stab. Problem is, in any fight where we start taking damage, these Masterful Stabs will be quickly become uh, useless stabs. And that is a bit of a problem for us. We could consider upgrading our after image. I think this is where we get to upgrade uh, Leg Sweep, now that Gremlin Knob is no longer on the horizon here. So that we can have the full block value of that card. Five gremlins, or, well, four gremlins, form the so-called Gremlin Gang. A pretty nasty encounter that you can see here in Act 2, Act 1, the late half of Act 1, second, Act 1, Part 2, Act 2. So there, so being able to just verbally correct yourself when you misspeak without being embarrassed or ashamed or something, I think that is an important part of teaching. It's inevitable. You can't. You can't say every word perfectly. If if Barack Obama is allowed to stutter, then so can you, damn it. You know? So I could play the Predator to kill the fat gremlin, but then we don't have an energy for block, or I can just block this turn. We get more free block next turn, so I think I'd rather just do that. Neutralize you. Survivor away the Predator, which feels feels bad. And then take my 14 free block on this turn to do whatever the heck I want with. Which turns out playing Masterful Stab is what I want with. Kill you! Weaken this one forever. And then we should be able to kill this one next turn. Beautiful. All right, we have two potions. Second backflip is almost always acceptable. It's more card draw, and we want to be able to draw these zero-cost masterful stabs, and we want to be able to block. So I say take the second backflip. Indeed, why take five when there is a line to take zero? If you see a good move, look for a better one. Speaking of a good move, here might be to use the Essence of Steel. It let's me play all my attack cards this turn, and it's going to provide nice additional block throughout this fight. Essence of Steel struggles to be a relevant potion most of the time, so all the more reason to use it here. Bit of wasted damage, that's okay. Not wasted if I draw the Masterful Stab, though. Now, let's just play the Predator. Start chunking you. Seven block currently. We want to do backflip sucker punch then. The strike strike won't be enough. We'll take one. It's a pretty good turn. Of course, we haven't actually needed the block from the plated armor much yet. No, I think with, with the actual draws we got, the uh, essence of steel was kind of wasted. Oh well. Look how convincingly we've been handling all the fights here in the sacks. Get a gremlin horn now? That's gonna make the slime boss really easy as we kill the little little ones. Second sucker punch is here. We have not mastered this card. But I don't think it's particularly good right now. Could take a, another backflip or deadly poison. I think this is correct to skip, actually. We we don't want another sucker punch. We already have pretty good weak access. We've already got two copies of a weird clumsy card. I, I don't know that I like adding another Sucker Punch here. Despite the not mastered label on it, doesn't mean it's correct to take. We'll skip.
We'll skip. Yeah, somebody made a uh, mod for our mastered cards. That was uh, our community member B. Yeah. We could definitely consider upgrading uh, After Image for this deck. Other upgrades that are good actually genuinely backflip for higher base block values. Let's get that. Let's get a backflip upgraded. This is a card we're really going to enjoy having upgraded in Act, at, well, 2, 3, and 4, quite frankly. Less so Act 1 here. Here it doesn't matter much. Speaking of, what's our plan if we get bonked? I guess we can weakness the slime boss to mitigate somewhat. And we do have a forge potion to upgrade blocks if necessary. Okay, this is a pretty good draw. Didn't completely brick here. We have to get slime boss below 76 health or to 75 or lower in order to split slime boss and prevent the slime crush. It looks like I might be able to full block this move though, if we want to. This brings up Slime Boss to exactly 76. So Leg Sweep Backflip looks very reasonable. Uh, is it a real full block though? That's an important question. Damage will do 28. We would go to 16 block, 22 block. So we're not preventing damage, which is less than ideal for sure. That was the turn for the Forge Pot. Really would like to take zero rather than taking one, you know, a single digit number and having the masterful stabs cost something. But I also like the idea of getting a much better split lined up. All right. Potion won't make a difference here, right? This goes to... Twenty-five if I use the potion. Still not, still not enough. Not playing neutralize, as that would bring Slime Boss below half and alter their behavior in an undesirable way here. Alright, so we got five slimes added, but we removed four. And now we have an excellent draw pile for dealing with the resultant split slimes, although we don't have the best split turn. Good Blessing of the Forge for a substantial increase in damage. Plus four, plus three, plus two, plus nine to both. If I think I need the potion, this would be the time to use it. All right, let's do it. Perfect. Please don't weaken me. Thank you, Gremlin Horn making my life nice and easy. Sucker Punch would split, or we can just leg sweep and full block. Let's do that. All right, great fight. Great fight. Don't know if we actually needed to use the Forge Potion, but getting Slime Boss down as the Silent really is one of the first major hurdles of your run. So to do so successfully always feels really good. We're through. We're through and we're offered Storm of Steel Nightmare Doppelganger. All interesting options. Don't really like any of them with what we're doing currently. I guess Storm of Steel kind of has an interaction with After Image, kind of has an interaction with Double Backflip and our card draw overall. But it's, it's not very much damage. Nightmare could let us create copies of a, f a card in a uh, future hand. Masterful Stab is a hilarious target, but sometimes. After Image, maybe, but mostly none of this is very good. Nightmare does play nice with Masterful Stab in that if you create, if, if you play Nightmare on Masterful Stab and then take damage, and then the next turn your Masterful Stabs are created, those Masterful Stabs won't know that you took damage. They're ignorant because they weren't they weren't created when you took the damage. But 
But is that a good enough reason to take Nightmare and Masterful Stab together here? No, I don't think so. Or Doppelganger, which could be fun if we can invest some bonus energy into it. Next turn, draw X cards and gain X energy. Set up one super turn. This is where I really would have liked to see Phantasmal Killer. Faley says, what's the difference between a bedroom and a panic room? I don't know, Faley. What is the difference between a bedroom and a panic room? I am going to skip all three of these, I think. Oh, interesting. I've got some really fun options here, actually. Actually, no, I really like these options. No energy available, which makes me glad I skipped all the rare cards. Although Storm of Steel would have been pretty good with Wrist Blade. Our options are thus. Empty Cage, remove two cards. We could get rid of two strikes and really slurp this deck down to just the good stuff. That would allow us to redraw the Masterful Stabs far more easily and would be pretty helpful. Wrist Blade, any zero cost attacks will deal additional damage. That's Neutralize, that's Endless Agony, and as long as they cost zero, it's Masterful Stab. It's also a really good reason to pick up Shivs, which we already kind of want. Or we could take the Calling Bell, take a unique, unremovable curse, the Curse of the Bell, which will give us six max health, and three relics in addition to that. One common, one uncommon, and one rare. Firstly, I'm eyeing the uh, Wrist Blade the most here, although I also really like Remove Two Strikes with Empty Cage. I'm taking this uh, Wrist Blade. This is going to boost our damage substantially. Hopefully we're still going to make good use of the Masterful Stab here in Act 2. Although full blocking on turn 1 could pose a problem in certain, cir circum certain circumstances. There's only one early shop available. If we want to go to a shop, maybe buy a relic, maybe remove a card, we'll have to do it there. Otherwise, it looks like a pretty tricky act overall. Good news is, with Gremlin Horn, I'm really not that afraid of the elites of Act 2. What's the difference between a bedroom and a panic room? A spider. <laughs> yes, one quickly turns into the other by the addition of a spider. Hmm. So how important is that shop, I guess is the question. We don't have to go. I could do a shop after several elites if I wanted to. I guess we can see how the first fight goes. Option A. Option B. Can maybe consider Burning Elite. Or shops from there. So I guess option B, is it going to be in white here? Sure. That takes more Elites. Could also be in red, I suppose. I'm not sure. I guess we'll see how this first fight goes, because we have a commonality starting right here. Can't easily play four attacks in one turn. We could have knocked out one of the birds this turn, but then we would have taken six damage. Instead, I'm just going to weaken them both. So we take zero and chip away at the one with the most health. That's getting strength this turn. Next turn should be fine. Turn after next could be a problem, though. Draw me an attack. Dang it. So only three attacks means I cannot knock any of them out of the air here. I think I'll weaken the middle one, as that's the only one I know is going to be attacking me next turn. Does that mean we should attack the middle one? Yes, I think so. It's actually quite likely to be dead next turn. As a predator alone will kill it. In that case, don't weaken it. Weaken the one with strength. Casual 40 block that turn, by the way. I might not get to play predator, so let's just kill the middle one this turn. And then play predator on you instead. Good times.
All right, this fight was pretty smooth between the Gremlin Horn and the Boat Thingy. We had a, a lot of added value. That and the Wrist Blade, too, of course. Worked out very cleanly. All our attack is our first AoE option that we're really offered here. I don't think that's good enough. None of these seem like they're good enough. How do I feel about diving into elites as we are? I think we might have too many strikes for that. But at the same time... Have you ever played a Tainted Grail Conquest? No. I chose not to, uh, not to play that game. actually bail out because there's also this option and then we can just go to this shop anyway right okay yeah, let's do that Ooh, strikes for bites we have not yet removed any strikes we have five strikes in the deck we're being offered the chance to lose some of our max health turn those into bites which could gradually heal us back Bites are at their most useful in letting you take multiple elites in Act 2 or Act 3 uh, without taking sustained damage. So I think we could easily go four elites if I took the Bites, although I'll probably go to one or more shops. We do have to lose a lot of max health. 23 brings us all the way from 76 down to 53. But 53 is still pretty good. And we could get more with the Darkstone Periapt. I'm going to make this trade. Of course, Bites and Masterful Stab do run contrary to each other, do they not? That's okay. Give me your gold. Should probably kill the back one first, actually, upon review. Don't want to backflip because if I draw a predator, I'm not gonna be able to play it. Okay. Right, because if they both attack me, I'd rather kill the mugger. That's why. Oh. And you're not allowed to get away. I've got bites, so I'll take this hit. Always heal the health back, after all. Hmm. Well, I may have done this slightly wrong. Yeah. Shoot. Alright, well, uh, enjoy my money, I guess. Bummer. Slice does 10 damage. It's fine. I would rather have a Slice Plus. I'd much rather have a Slice Plus. You gotta stay weakened for next turn, you creepy plant thing. You just didn't dodge the boot thingy, so all is pretty well here. Lose some health to the snake plant, but we just get it all back. Now we're at full health. Seems good. Full health, two potions. Alchemize has got to be better than infinite blades, even with wrist blade, right? Alchemize is just too good. Obtain a random potion once per combat. That's very good. Does Nightmaring the Endless Agony give you six of it in your draw pile the next turn? No, you'll only get three. 
The phrasing on Endless Agony is very important. Whenever you draw this card, and for Slay the Spire, that has a specific meaning. That means taking the card from the top of your draw pile and putting it into your hand. If the card is put into your hand from any other location, including somewhere else other than the top of the draw pile or the discard pile or is created and put directly into your hand like Dead Branch or an attack potion, then it's not count as being drawn. And so it won't be duplicated just as the condition for Sneko Eye only randomizes a card on being drawn. So any card under the same conditions won't have its cost randomized. No, if it's on top of your draw pile and you use a card like Seek or Secret Technique to get it, that's still not drawing it. Because it's the action of the card Seek that uh, qualifies it as a draw or not. A draw can only ever be the top card of your draw pile, though. Well, I don't need 11 health. Let's look at uh, 20 cards. Show me a Blade Dance. Backstab's half decent. There's Blade Dance. Third Masterful Stab. No, thank you. I could take Accuracy, but I don't actually have Shivs yet. I think we just want Blade Dance, right? We have... It's four cards in one with uh, After Image, and it's 24 damage with wrist, with Blade. It's pretty absurd here. But we could be okay. But we'd much rather have the added offense of the Blade Dance. All right, let's take some elites. Hell yeah. Get Grumlin Horns. And we have an Alchemize, so I'm going to use Power Potion here, too. Give me an Infinite Blades. Let's do it. Come on. Yes, attack me while I have free block. Do it. You see what happens. I'll keep the potion. Really? Hmm. That could be a problem. Okay, not a problem, as Gremlin Leader did, did not attack me, despite the Gremlin being here. Good. Let's just focus on finishing the fight, then. Spooky. Bye bye Akka Beko makes our first attack deal 8 additional damage. We're offered backflip, blur, or leg sweep, but only one of the three has an upgrade on it. This blur. I'll take an upgraded blur, allowing us to block for 8 and retain block for one turn as well. That sounds great to me. We got through that fight easy peasy. Let's grab an upgrade, and I want that upgrade to be on Alchemize, reducing the energy cost and allowing us to always play it for free alongside our card draw stuff. Our second elite is going to be the Three Slavers, who I think is a very good second opponent for us to face. 28 plus 16. Let's do quick math here. Seven. So we actually perfectly kill with just one bite. Perfect. Now Alchemize does four more damage. Huzzah! Ooh, that's a juicy wrist blade. Let's backflip too. Heck yeah. Essence of Steel into Alchemize. 
into blade dancing. Of course, now we get a fear potion. We could use it on the front slaver. Do we need to? I really, really, really doubt it. Very high odds of a potion, though. Eh, might as well. When in Rome. Blade has definitely kicked butt so far. And so have the bites. Now we get Blood Vial after getting the bites, of course. We do get an attack potion to go with our wrist blade and a terror plus to apply 99 vulnerable to a target of our choosing for free. Or we could take another blade dance without an upgrade on it. I, for one, see a Terror Plus, and I love it. Dash Plus is not bad either, but Terror is great here. What's in the box? Or a Calcum. If we have no block at the end of our turn, gain six block. With an after image, this will almost never happen, so I'd say we should take the Sapphire Key here. Ooh, this might be one of those rare situations where it's actually correct to kill Mystic on turn one because we don't have enough damage to kill Centurion turn one. But we do have Attack Potion. Let's see what the Attack Potion says. Attack Potion says we have either a bonus damage choke or a bonus damage predator. So it'd be 19 base. I think that's actually enough. What does the Sapphire Key do? It's one of three keys required to go to the final act, Act 4 of Slay the Spire. Easy peasy. And I guess Mystic doesn't even heal this turn because there's not enough hit points missing because the Centurion's just outright dead. Yeah, that was a strength buff. Cute. Second Swift Potion's pretty good. Flechette's plus. Six damage per skill in our hand. Ooh, with a free upgrade. And an Akabeko. This card kind of slaps. A lot. Give me that. Definitely give me double swift potion then. Now we just need to set up the wrist blade flechettes. That's right. And I've got alchemize in my hand, so I'm pretty much obliged to use one of these swift potions, actually. So now flechettes is 14 damage six times, thanks to the power of Akabeko. Seems pretty good to me. Kerblam. And yes, of course there was a fear potion. Of course there was a fear potion. Just freaking knew it, man. Uh, do I still use that now? Of course, the reason I didn't do that first is that Alchemize is a skill, so it would have reduced the hits on the uh, Flechettes by one. <laughs> That's so funny. I don't mind taking a small amount of damage, though. That's fine. Yeah, we'll use it now. We'll do it. We'll do it. Almost have a kill turn one. That's pretty good. Get a kunai! Oh. 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 We got a kunai, Twitch chat. Certainly makes Cloak and Dagger look a lot better. 
Cloak and Dagger looks pretty good. Wow, we absolutely stomped those elites, by the way. We're still at full health after the third one. There weren't two shops staring me down. I'd really consider this Burning Elite, but I really do want these two shops. See no reason not to go two Burnings? I, I see two reasons not to go two Burnings. I, I guess we... I guess we could do it. We'll beat the champ as we are. Problem is that we're stuck with five... I guess they're bites, huh? We don't even have five strikes. Hmm. That is a pretty good reason to go for the Burning Elite, actually. And we'll have more options in Act 3. All right. Go this way. I'm sufficiently convinced. Aha. Uh -huh. So close. Thank you, Sneko. Good, good job. Finisher's not good enough here. All right, they've got max health this time. Kind of spooky. Get a swift potion right away. There it is, the flechettes. Funnily enough, with uh, three skills in hand exactly, whether we terror first or not is irrelevant. So I guess I'll use the terror on a different target. I think I'm playing this after image. Yes, I am. Shiv Potion is really good for the uh, champ fight, I guess. For any fight. Three Shiv Plus will do 10 damage apiece. two from Blood Vial, so we're already essentially at full health. Plus one strength is excellent. All of our attacks will do one more damage. We get the second of three keys required to go to Act 4. We get a second Blade Dance as well, which I'm certainly going to take. Uh, I think that's better than accuracy since the shivs already do enormous damage and we want to be activating the Kunai as much as possible. How about a Speed Potion? Not as useful as the Block Potion and the Shiv Potion, I don't think. And we get one more combat. I'll go here, why not? One more combat on our way out of the act here. Where we may want to use this uh, cunning potion, depending on the draws. So far, not bad. Ooh, that plus... Uh, plus one strength really making the difference that turn. Wow. Savage. Not even dignifying me with an attack? How dare you, Chosen? Give me the bonus draw. Here we could just leg sweep, blur, masterful stab. Should be mostly fine next turn as well. I don't even need to play the blur if I don't want to. But I do want to. Chaos plays the top three cards of the deck. We're offered a third Blade Dance. Another thousand cuts. Or the second Sucker Punch. If we still want to try to do that. It's not the world's worst Sucker Punch. 
my favorite relic, like the most fun to play with. My usual answer to that is uh, Runic Pyramid or Anton Lad. Uh, although, I'd honestly, a qu close second, if it, when it does work, the Unceasing Top is such a joy. Third Blade Dance is very reasonable here. But getting Punch Mastery down actually seems quite good too. I'm gonna grab this Sucker Punch. I think we have, I think we have the leeway to do this. I'll take Distilled Chaos over Energy Pot. Can't stop the top. Almost never take bites. I think bites are a really good way to allow yourself to take more elites, especially in Act Two. Uh, that's definitely what we did with it in this run here. All right, Champ's a little tricky because we have two Masterful Stabs, so every time we do take damage, we're going to have a problem. However, if we can build up Dexterity with a Kunai, it's not going to matter much. YOLO. Potion may be useful. Champ's a, a fight in two phases. The first phase occurring when Champ is above half health, and then transitioning to a second phase, the turn after dropping below half, which is in this case uh, 220 health. This is a pretty good turn to do it. I think I'd like to wait, though. This is an even better turn to do it, as we won't be weakened next turn, and we won't be vulnerable on the execute turn. So let's go. Champ buffs with Metallicize here. On this turn, now that he's dropped below half health, he enters the phase transition part of the fight. Fortunately, we're not able to do a whole lot of damage this turn. And on this turn, the champ will attack us for enormous damage. However, all of the debuffs have worn off thanks to convenient timing. And we have an inordinate amount of dexterity, so actually, everything seems mostly fine. In fact, we can full block with Sucker Punch here, or I can retain a ton with Defend. This does deal damage and reduces strength with Weaken for further turns. Let's do this. Perfectly block your stinky hands. All right, now would be the time for the Fear Potion. I do think we should use it for a bit of extra oomph to finish off the champ before we get hit by another Execute. Life's good. Double Masterful Stab doing wonders in this fight, actually. We never took damage to the champ. GG. We also now have 500 bucks. A second after image, which is a card we haven't even mastered. Although Malaise is tempting as well. And Storm of Steel fits into the deck as well. Second after image is certainly beautiful here. We would love another copy of after image. Give it to me. Yeah, it's the deck to master after image. I agree completely. And then it's the tech to take a Sneko Eye with? Hmm. Those aren't the boss relics we were looking for. No energy here. Instead, we're offered Black Star for bonus relics from elites. With 500 gold, my priority is going to be more in the shop direction than elites. Sacred Bark is okay. Double strength potions. 
but otherwise we're going to really struggle with uh, not that much energy per turn in combat, except when Gremlin Horn is kicking in. So I'm thinking maybe Sacred Bark, maybe Black Star. Both are pretty okay. Let's try the Bark. How's the map look? Yeah, Black Star would have only been two elites if we want to go to a shop. It's not great. But we can get it. Actually, no, there is a three elite and shop path, now that I look at it another time. That's three elites in a shop. A couple of events to start as well, if we want them. We don't have either the golden mask, uh, either the red mask or the golden idol, excuse me. So events are not that great here. Nine 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 gold would not be acceptable anyway. Two shop path is not possible. Matt Warbuckle, thank you so much for 42 months. The answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. Let's do this. They're all buffing on turn one. That's always rude. But not when you can kill them all. then it's not even a problem. I don't want to kill you next turn. No, let's do it now. Ah, not quite. That's fine. We don't want to win before we generate a potion anyway. Six turns of vulnerable for those who want it. This Blade Dance has a plus on it. Or we could take a second Flechette's here, try to get that mastered as well. I think we do need, with three energy, we're really going to need some help in this fight. And a second Blade Dance plus is definitely going to qualify as help. We're lucky enough that our first event was the Glowing Tesseract, where we can sacrifice some health easily replaced for colorless card rewards, which can be quite strong, like a zero cost vulnerable in trip here. We've already got Terror Plus, though. Four thoughts, interesting. Secret technique is excellent. Impatience could be interesting. Madness and discovery. Hmm. Definitely want secret technique. No question about that. The forethought wrist blade synergy. The power. Zero cost flechettes. Finally. I'll take a Discovery, though. Discovery can be uh, generating zero-cost attacks. That's pretty good. And we have to lose Cloak and Dagger after Image or one of our Bites. I'm actually quite happy to go down to four Bites. Four Bites might even be the correct number. Goodbye. Bye, Bite.
When the silent removes a bite guard bite card, does she gain a slight underbite? Range Merging Accident. Thanks so much for the five gifted subs. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, everybody. Glitchiness, did you hear about the vampire who got a job interview working at a mirror factory? They had to turn down the job because they just couldn't see themselves working there. Cloak and Dagger. And yeah, I'll fear potion this thing. Seems pretty alright. No sign of the potion creating card, that's fine. There it is, set up, plus put a card on top of your draw pile. It costs zero until drawn, until played rather. It does have a free upgrade on it. And we're desperate for energy. I, I'm gonna try it. We're definitely gonna need to add more card draw now, but it's, it's an option. It's an option for us. This is a bit, bit of a problem. Thank goodness we have a super block potion. And free block on turn two. All right, make it happen. Set up flechettes. Sixteen damage. Twice the power. It's actually enough damage. I'll take it. Get a dupe pot, which can duplicate two cards. <laughs> hmm. I don't think so. I don't think so. I could consider this dodge and roll, but I even don't think that's good enough. No, let's let's not. Let's not do that. No. Thank you. Oh man, have we ever got things to upgrade? Am I gonna need one of these after images upgraded? Not yet. Grab a recall. To set up, reset the counter on Masterful Stab. Um, it temporarily puts it to zero. I, I don't think it, I would say that it resets it. Sure, I'll discover adrenaline, I guess. Oh, hello. I'm not gonna ignore that. That's too much damage to ignore. image, then backflip. Ooh, I'm gonna want that play dance. Set up this play dance. Hey, BB Tech. Thanks for the hundo bits. Bits only mode. Why isn't that a thing? I'm not gonna do pot here, but I might block pot here. Fire our shivs nine damage because we have one strength for plus one and 
plus four from the wrist blade, which makes zero cost attacks do four additional damage, thus a total of nine currently. Kill this one first. Secret technique. Get me a blade dance, please. I do want to still use this. Looking for better potions. Pretty bad use of the potion, though. Would have been much better on this turn. Hmm. Well. Ah, there's the potion. Ghost in a jar. Gain... Two intangible. Two turns of all enemy damage reduced to one. And the boot. We did take the second Sucker Punch already, right? Yeah, we did. Okay. I don't need another blur. The saddest boot, but the most powerful ghost. Welcome. Hey, I had noted that, Skidrez. Thanks uh, thanks for pointing that out then ago. Uh, again, though, yes, you can use map marks to mark all nodes of a particular color. It's pretty cool. Tough figuring out what to upgrade here. Theoretically, we want to upgrade Blade Dance. I guess with two after images in Kunai, yeah, I do want to upgrade Blade Dance. Even though Time Eater is a thing coming up. Smiling Mask? That's a pretty amusing. Right before the first shop of the run, essentially. Oh. <laughs> ah, okay. Wow. What a store. Let's have a quick look at the deck here. Dupe the setup. So Potion Belt seems like an absolute no-brainer. Two more potion slots is absurd. Absurdly good in general. I think uh, Paper Crane is also a no-brainer. This improves our weak reduction from 25 to 40% on enemies. One of the best defensive relics in the game. And this deck has plenty of weaken between Double Sucker Punch, the Neutralize, and the Leg Sweep Plus. So both of these are absolutely spectacular. Leaving us with only 174 gold, unfortunately. Which is enough to Dolly's Mirror or something. We could duplicate the Alchemize and get more potions with Sacred Bark. That's actually kind of a cool idea. We could also remove a card. We could buy 10 Max Health with a Fruit Juice also. The most important card we could do for mastery purposes would be Survivor. I don't think we're in a position to be able to do that, though. I think Alchemize would be a much better duplication, given the current circumstances. Secret Technique would also be pretty okay. What would I remove? Gonna be stuck with these uh, double masterful stabs for the time being. That is a really good dupe, Alchemize. I don't even think the removals are that good. Okay. Let's do it. Dupe the Alchemize Plus. And face the Nemesis with the boot. We got boot before Nemesis. It finally happens. The luck, the power, the incredulity. Sucker Punch, Survivor, Cloak and Nagger is a very reasonable turn. We could play Discovery to try to do something better. Let's actually just set up Discovery. This 
discovery. What you got? Doppelganger. Doppelganger is pretty good. We can hit quite a few times, though, with the attacks because of the boot. Each of these will do five. And it'll be gaining dexterity for it, too. Let's do it this way. Booted upon. A mere twenty seven. Easy. So we get a double skill potion and a double fire potion. Could kill with a fire potion right now. Although, if the fight goes on longer, we'll probably gain more health. Yep. We've got a bottled flame, allowing us to have an attack in the opening hand. We could bottle the flechettes and enshrine Akabeko flechettes as a thing. Although, there's not that many fights left. Bottled Predator is also quite nice in a few fights, I tend to find. This will be our first Piercing Whale. Well, it's a pretty good card, broadly speaking. Another Blade Dance Plus also definitely fits in. Right? The crane crane taking incoming damage from 45 all the way down to 27 is huge. It's going to make an even bigger impact on the heart fight. Have we had not had match 3 of Piercing Whale? Honestly, I just think we haven't been offered very many of them. And without retain in this deck, I, I really don't like it that much. I'm going to skip this one. What about this Blade Dance, though? I'm going to skip this. Yeah, I'll take one more Blade Dance Plus. Skip the Bottled Flame, though. And we are going to upgrade one of these after images, I think. Feels important to do. Hello there. The Writhing Mass is an enemy that changes their attack intent every time they are damaged. Which in my opinion, is both a good thing and a bad thing. The way I like to think of it is it gives you control over the fight by allowing you to reroll at your choosing, but it can also be quite bad by forcing you to not play cards that you really would have rather yes played. So I like to think of this as a fight where you attack it until it arrives at an intent that you're okay with, and then you should stop. So playing more attacks here would only invite disaster, as we're already full blocking this intent. Let's just take that win and stick to it. All right, skill potion. Actually, use the fire potion here. Double, double ghost in a jar. Four turns of intangible in the potion belt directly. That's the power of Alchemize. Oops. All right, stop there. Let's use this now. Double Bouncing Flask, I'm in. Super Energy Potion.
not that one. I bite you. Get a super fire potion back. Some cards I don't really want. And we're about to go into an elite fight. Four energy potion seems pretty good, actually. Let's skip the fire pot. Our last elite is Raptomancer again. Just like before, the Grumlin Horn should make this a lot easier. the duplication potion here. We can dupe two cards. Blur, I'm thinking Blur and Alchemize, actually. Let's use the energy potion, although it won't get me any use this turn. Let's just do this. Double Blur. Double Alchemize, make Gambler's Brew and Power Potion. It's pretty good. Hopefully we don't have to use a Ghost in Jar here. No, we don't. Okay. You got Discovery. Finisher. Oh, it's a zero cost finisher. 16 damage per attack played. Oh. Kerplam. Get wrecked. There's the fruit juice. 10 max health. Heck yeah. Do we want endless agony? Not really. Planning on using the Power Potion against Time Eater. Let's discard Gambler's Brew then, pick up the Fruit Juice, and just drink it right away. Since we have many good potions coming up in the coming fights. Acro is draw. But bear in mind, this deck has no energy to spend on drawing that isn't also blocking. With only three energy per turn, can I really afford to spend one on Acrobatics? I don't think so. I don't think so. Do we upgrade the other after image? Feels kind of important. Yeah, let's go double upgraded after image. We don't need a beat of death counter. For the heart, especially. It's also going to be just broadly useful in this fight. Power potions, what do you got? Double infinite blades. Double tools the trade. Double accuracy. Accuracy will make the shivs do so much more damage, we can get done with this fight real fast, like. Infinite blades seems like it could be a problem. Tools is great, though. Draw two, discard two. Let's go double tools, actually. Oh, so, well. No, double accuracy. Tough choice, actually. Really tough choice. Weak pot's pretty good. That would let me not play this Sucker Punch. Let's just go ahead and use that. Yeah. Still take three, but that's fine. I'm not counting on the Masterful Stabs anyway. Still worth playing, I think. There's so much damage. Yeah. Building dexterity is also pretty important for this fight.
Here's where I actually wish the blade dances weren't upgraded. This is gonna hurt a little bit. Actually, no. Paper crane. Paper crane is huge here to make sure that even though Time Eater is gaining a lot of strength, it's not going to make enough of a difference. I think we'll go without Terror here. We're almost to the halfway point of the Time Eater fight. We can play Terror after Time Eater removes debuffs. Smoke Bomb, get me out of here. I don't want to be in this fight anymore. Thanks. Set this up. Goodrez says, do poison cards have a place in a deck that isn't necessarily built towards poison? Yes. Uh, in particular, just one bouncing flask can be a really helpful boss solve in a silent deck that otherwise has problems in longer fights. Just, just one or two poison cards that you can stack on each other can be an answer to some fights, even if you ignore the cards in other fights. In a deck like this, and Venom would be pretty okay. Secret technique. We don't need Blur, actually. We Survivor, I guess. So on this turn, Time Eater will remove all debuffs from themselves. I'm going to use this opportunity to gain a Kunai proc. And now we can play Terror pretty comfortably, whenever we see it. Uh, next turn looks like a bit of a problem, though. Let's set up a defense. Twenty-one by three. Yikes! Glad we drew Sucker Punch at least. That's less bad, but still very bad. Not willing to use these ghosts in a jars unless I absolutely have to, and I really don't think we do. Oh dear. Twenty-two. No, I still don't have to. We should be completely fine in the next boss fight, I imagine. Now we have the weakened down properly. Much easier to manage. And yeah, we do still have bites, so we can even gain some of this health back, maybe. But only if the draw order is uh, favorable to us. Don't think we're gonna draw this slimed again, so I'm not gonna pl bother playing it, because I think the fight will be over before that problem occurs. Need to be weak next turn. Um, this is bad, though. 36. Not that bad. It seems that we're just losing more and more health, rather than gaining it. Good news is, looks like we have a kill here. Yeah, we definitely do. Whew. Okay, Ghost in a Jar is preserved. We have two more Alchemizes for the next fight, as well as 25 health to start. I also think that the Awakened One should be relatively easy for this deck because we have comparatively few powers and comparatively more other stuff. Though, am I gonna play one of the After Images this turn? I really ought to, yeah? After Image, Blade Dance, Neutralize, Blur, maybe? We're not gonna be able to retain any block, but that's fine. Gremlin Horn's also going to help a lot here. That's only 14, so we actually do get to keep one block. Beautiful. And playing only one after image means the Awakened One gets less strength, so it's actually better anyway. I 
the link sweep, please, and thank you. Stay weak. So multi-attack only being 6x4, that we can deal with most times. Already I'd say this fight is under control. Very encouraging. Discovery could change that, though. Technically? Easy every time. Six shiv plus? Oh, we're gonna love that in the uh, spear and shield fight. That's a lot of damage. Each of those shivs does 11 damage. Stab is still zero cost. That's pretty sweet. Sign of a job well done. Don't really care about bites because we get a full heal with the meal ticket anyway, so let's just optimize for the rest of the stuff, dexterity and whatnot. Okay, those voids are kind of nasty. I'm glad we didn't draw them both at the same time there. This could still be bad, though. Oh, leg sweep's here. Good job, leg sweep. Who needs footwork when you've got shiv work? And ghost work. Predator here. Again, we don't care about the healing from the bites in this fight. to avoid any particularly nasty hands. Good job and GG to the Awakened One. We're through. The three energy deck actually makes it, not just makes it, but we have what I would consider a very commanding position because this potion belt is absolutely stacked with hot nonsense we can use to cheese the endgame. Four turns of complete invulnerability for the heart, especially is looking really juicy. Have I been here before? Is this 
the source of all these juicy, juicy potions. We are missing some health, but the meal ticket will bring us to full as soon as we enter the shop, so we can upgrade one more card here. Which, based on how the other fights went, I'm actually thinking should be neutralized, just because we want to ensure that the Paper Crane Weaken stays active on the Heart or the Spear and Shield, whatever's relevant here. We could upgrade Secret Technique to make it reusable, but with so many cards in the deck, I expect it won't matter that much that we could use it again. Likewise with Discovery. Just takes too long to go through the deck the first time. That uh, I don't think being able to get it out of the discard pile eventually makes much of a difference at all. Bag of prep might have been nice. Tactician might have been nice. And the third fruit juice is huge. Ish. Could swap one of our potions for a four dex potion or eight plated armor. But I think just a simple card removal is in order here. And I actually would remove one more bite. How's it going, Reader Boy? Yes, we're using a new mod to display the mastery of cards. Here's where I would drop Masterful Stab if it weren't for that pesky mastery challenge. In order to master the Masterful Stab, we have to win with two copies of it in the deck. So we have to keep both of them and then win so that this is properly a Masterful Stab deck before we can say that we've done that proper like. Shame we didn't get the double setup, though. All right, it's a beautiful turn one. I have very little in the way of complaint here. Question is, should I kill the shield or the spear first? I'm actually thinking this is a kill the shield first situation. We get free block on turn two. The shield has the lower health total, and I'm pretty sure we can kill it this turn. I might even be able to keep the energy potion in so doing. We said these were 11 damage each, and there's six of them, right? Yeah, let's just, just use that. Now I can play after image number two. Holy shivs, Batman. Oof. All right, here's where we take some damage, unless I choose to use one of the potions. Gonna get some back with the bites. This unfortunately didn't quite work out the way we'd hoped. We can actually reduce the damage by setting up a burn, though, so it won't hurt me. Brilliant. Brilliant. Can't get the weakness down is the main issue here. Setup saves the day again. Really don't take that much. 22? That's fine. Blur there. Then it buffs, then it adds burns again, and next turn it adds it does the big stabby again. So let's blur. Blur leg sweep is probably the right play here. Yeah, it's gotta be. And that way this is reasonably blocked. After him, it's sure. Speed potion could be nice. Yeah, one more potion we can create as well. Pot seems pretty good, but energy potion seems even better than the speed potion. Oh, 10 regen. Okay, well, that'll be great in the heart fight. Excellent, one might even say. Oh, I should have played Sucker Punch there. Foolishness. Oof, and we can't quite kill here, huh? Tricky, tricky. I 
I'm no longer concerned though because the regen potion and the ghost and jar combined means we go to full health for the heart. So we, we could leave this fight at one health and we still would beat the heart. At this point. Damage output's a little concerning though. Or lack thereof. Oh, well that helps. Bronze scales. Deal three damage back whenever we're attacked. How convenient. And a calculated gamble to get through the deck? Sure. Don't mind if I do. All right. Yeah, we really rely on terror. That's uh, definitely true to some extent. All right, this is my energy potion, probably, right? Because I want to play everything in my hand. After image, after image, leg sweep, blade dance, sucker punch. That's uh, six energy a card. So we get to use three out of the four energy from the potion. That's worth it. Then we have four turns of weakness on hurt hearts. We gain a point of dexterity. We block all damage this turn, ensuing the masterful stabs are still zero cost. That's great. And we'll start regenerating, of course, too. What's this make? An Essence of Steel for 8 Plated Armor. Okay. So, there's our start. Turn ends, we heal 10. Heart debuffs the heck out of us. And attacks for only 40 here, accounting for the... Paper Crane. I guess how badly do I care about Masterful Stabs being zero? We could intangible here, but we don't actually have to. I think this is a good time to do it, though. I, also, if we take some damage now, since we have so much regeneration stacked, we're going to get the health back. So it really is mostly about the Masterful Stab cost, and I don't think I care that much. This fight might need to go on for a long time. Not use this yet. Here's terror. This turns a bit more iffy. So this wouldn't even be reduced if we were intangible. This is the same damage regardless. A secret teching here. Backflip. Backstab. here. I figured that might happen. Bummer. Alright, that's where the plated armor come in then. Well, we're not afraid of beat of death. Weak potion. Perfect time. Okay, you be weak for the rest of the fight, please. Now we don't really care about the artifacts. Discovery says make an escape plan. I like that. Just fine. Definitely want to get rid of Slimed forever. This fight is going to go on for a while. That sound effect, though. Alright, I'm here 2 by 15 Note that our dexterity has not gotten to a large number yet. I guess this is just Blade Dance, Defend, Defend. We'll take some, lose some plated armor. But overall, this looks pretty fine. Take three hits, lose three plated armor. Hmm. This turn is less desirable. Still only taking 11 or so. I think it's worth it to keep the Ghost in Jar. We can use it on the, the more aggressive later cycles. Which is going to be great. Very helpful with Beat of Death being 3 as well, which it will be shortly. Thank you, Paper Crane. Yeah, poor Masterful Stabs are out of our price range now, but oh well.
Oh, I missed one dex there at some point. That's fine. We're actually just blocking this. Hmm. This is 3 by 15. This I can't reasonably block, though. Okay. Absolutely no reason to be tangible yet. Nice block. This is then 4 by 15 with Weaken. So this is 8 by 15 normally. And that means that we're already at the point where the heart is going to gain inordinate amounts of strength on the next buff. So our timer on this fight is actually almost over. But as you can see, the heart's health is also almost over. Let's just use this now. And then Predator, yeah. Take a little bit to deal as much as possible. What a run, Twitch chat. GG. Nom. Hey there, if you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.